it's your boy Luke back again for another NFL showdown picks video this time for our Sunday night football matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs which is going to be an absolute banger a shootout for sure between two of the best offenses in the NFL two of the best teams in the AFC as well potentially a precursor for what we see in the AFC championship game at least that's what I believe even though the Chiefs have gone off to a little bit of a sore start um, definitely believe they turn around by the end of the year so what we're going to do in this video we're going to go through our stud options for each team an injury report as well even though it'll be a brief injury report we'll also talk about some of our favorite value plays some of our favorite selections for the captain slot so make sure to strap on in we're going to give you everything you need to know for this matchup so without further ado let's hop right into the injury report for this week so like I kind of mentioned there, not many injuries to talk about in this game, especially from the fantasy relevant side of things. In terms of the Bills, we have four defensive starters questionable, all expected to suit up though. Those include Tredavious White, A.G. Epineza, and Jordan Poyer. Again, all of them expected to play. On the Chiefs side of things, we have Chris Jones as questionable. He's a little bit more as truly questionable in this matchup. William Gay, their linebacker, also placed an IR this week. So aside from that, no injuries on the offensive side of things, which is great to see, especially in this shootout type matchup. Want to see them at full power. And again, with a game flow here, expected at 56 and a half points in terms of an over under. The Chiefs just favored by two and a half points. It's really going to live up to its name. So let's, let's go into some of our stud options for each team. At number three for the Bills, we have Cole Beasley, who's $5,800 on this slate and a solid $1,400 cheaper than Emmanuel Sanders. And I have a very similar expectation for both of those players both running a lot of the small and short intermediate routes for that team. I have Beasley projected for 15.4 points and Emmanuel Sanders projected for 15.8. So not really worth the $1,400 difference to go from Beasley to Sanders. So that's why I see him here at number three. As of right now, I have him projected for just under 20% ownership, have Sanders projected for nearly 30%. So for me, I like the price discount as well as the ownership discount with very similar upside. At number two, we have Stefan Diggs, who is the most mispriced player on this entire slate at just $8,800. Do not understand that price tag at all. Have him projected for 19.3 points, and he is by far the best point per dollar play on this slate. Right now projected for just 32.6% ownership, which is just far too low. This is somebody who's nearly a lock play on the slate, especially with the shootout that we expect between these high-powered offenses. And there at number one, we have Josh Allen at $12,400. You're definitely going to have to pay up to get Josh, but it's worth it in my opinion. So right now, having projected for 22.8 points, projected to be in 74.7% .7 of lineups, which is quite outrageous when you look at it on paper, but definitely worth it. Somebody who has rushing upside as well as passing upside. And again, with a total over 56 implied total points, going to need likely both quarterbacks in this matchup. In terms of our Chiefs side of things, at number three, we have Travis Kelsey. I mean, this big three here, you could have probably guessed them before even watching this video, so we're not going to take too much time with them. A um, DraftKings price of $9,200 for Kelsey. He's somebody who has a relatively high floor. It's going to get you eight to 10 targets in essentially every single game. Also has a ton of touchdown upside. So at 18.2 projected points, just 17.4% ownership. A lot of that has to do with that price tag right there. He's definitely somebody I'm taking, especially in GPP formats. At number two, we have Tyree Kill, the absolute slam dunk play here on the slate at $10,400. I have him projected for 21.6 points, but in terms of his ceiling, it is a true 35 or 40 point regular point ceiling. So somebody who can go out, completely break the slate. We saw that last week, scored 50 fantasy points. So at 27.8% ownership, even at over $10,000, I'm willing to eat both of those price tag and that ownership level. But at number one, Patrick Mahomes, again, just like Josh Allen, probably didn't have to tell you to play him. This is going to be a shootout. You're going to need both quarterbacks. Playing them a captain though, probably not feasible. You're looking at around 18, maybe even $19,000 for playing Josh Allen at captain. And it's extremely hard to make a good lineup with the rest of your slots. So people that will be putting in the flex slot in essentially every lineup that I have this week, have projected for 21.9 points. So not quite as many as Josh Allen, just because he doesn't have that same rushing upside, but a little bit less ownership as well. So just 70.5% ownership. Do not hate that number at all. I wanted to introduce you guys to my Patreon page if you haven't already seen it. On there, you guys can get my full projections for every game on this week's slate of games, as well as all the slates going forward. It's just $8 for the month. You get my showdown projections for every game, as well as full slate projections, access to the Discord to ask me any questions, the rest of the community interact with them as well. So definitely well worth the cash. Definitely recommend that you guys check it out. Link will be in the description. Again, just $8 for the month, and you get my data for every player for every game. That's not just their ownership projections, it's also their projected points. We're talking target shares, 
some game theory stuff. Um, we'll talk showdown strategy in the Discord, all that kind of stuff. So make sure to hop on in. And now getting into our values, at number three, we have Gabriel Davis at just $1,000. It is a great price tag for somebody who's the de facto number three wide receiver for this team. So obviously had John Brown leaving the team. They had Emmanuel Sanders coming in. That was a quick turnaround. Davis just hasn't had a massive game to this point. He's definitely seen targets in every single game. He hasn't had that touchdown, but last year we saw that kind of upside, particularly in the playoffs. So at 9.8 projected points, at 14.9% ownership, I love him as a value play on this slate. He's not my favorite. Number one, he's definitely outshadowed by someone who's almost just as cheap. But in terms of a leverage play, in terms of somebody who you can definitely pair up when you're going after both those quarterbacks, I definitely like him. And number two, we have Miko Hardman. So if you're willing to spend up a little bit at the value spot, if you have a little bit of extra salary to spend because you used a cheaper captain, he's a great option. Somebody with a very high floor, as of right now, is the number three wide receiver on this Chiefs team. That is going to be up in question with our number one guy here in a second. But like his floor, have him projected for 11 points right now and 26.5% project projected ownership. But at number one, our play of the slate, that is Josh Gordon, guys. If you guys didn't know, he was signed from the practice squad this week for the Chiefs and an $1,800 if he ends up being that number two wide receiver for this team, watch the hell out. He could go out there and have a massive game. Right now, have him projected for just 11.5 points. Somebody who's a deep play threat. He's very good over the middle as well. I mean, he gets a bunch of PPR points just because he gets so many targets. Also, somebody you can take a five-yard slant and turn it into an 80-yard touchdown. I Maybe mean, we haven't seen him for quite some time, but every time we've seen him come back in the past for a lengthy time away from the game, I mean, year-long suspensions, et cetera, et cetera, Josh Gordon's come back with a vengeance. So... Definitely like him there at $1,800. In terms of our captains, we're going right back to them. He's our number three captain there at $2,700. So I have him for a 17.3% um, point projection there, just 2.5% ownership. So again, he's a relatively high risk, high reward play. Wouldn't be using him in a cash game, but in a GPP format where you're looking for that upside, he definitely has an 18 or a 20 real fantasy point performance in him. And if he does that at that price tag, he's definitely going to end up the optimal captain. At number two, though, we definitely have Tyreek Hill. Again, he put up 50 real fantasy points last week. So even at $15,600, I do like him at the captain slot. Rejected for 32.3 points, nearly 20% ownership. But again, I do think he has the highest upside. It's not even close of anybody on this slate. But at number one, my favorite captain play, a lot of it has to do with the price tag. He's in that sweet spot between that 7 to 9K range that I like to go to. So at the captain price of just $13,200, I love Stephon Diggs. How I'm projected for 32.9 points, even more than Tyreek Hill. Again, he has a higher median projection. Might not have the same upside as somebody like Tyreek Hill, but again, he's a full $2,000 cheaper. So at under 20% ownership, even less ownership than Tyreek Hill, he's by and far my favorite captain play on this slate. So I've got for my showdown plays, guys. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments who your favorite captain play is on this slate. If I'm looking for value, I'm definitely going to Josh Gordon, but for most of my lineups, Stephon Diggs is going to be my key captain play. We'd love to hear about it in the comments. Go ahead and let me know why as well. As always, guys, thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video. If you haven't already liked the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys go ahead and do so. I'm going to have showdown content coming out for the Monday night game. I already have it up for the Sunday morning football game, so if you haven't already seen that, make sure to go ahead and check that out. And we're going to have my weekly live stream on Sunday as well. That is going to be at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, going over the main slate. We're going to talk player poll, ownership, any live questions that you have, you can bring your season-long questions there as well. We'll be ha more than happy to answer those. Um, look forward to seeing you. Make sure to check out all that content. And until then, see ya.